there's nothing like it. It's totally cool. You're going a place, you have no idea what it's like, you're going to go and explore it, and no other humans have seen it. So you're seeing things for the first time. In 2006, the New Horizons spacecraft left Earth, bound for Pluto. Nine and a half years later, it is about to arrive. To know that there's something out there waiting for you to discover is just probably one of the most exciting things I've been able to do. Excitement over Pluto is nothing new. Even before its discovery, the idea that there could be a ninth planet was intriguing astronomers. In 1930, Clyde Tombaugh at the Lowell Observatory was searching the skies for the elusive Planet X, thought to be responsible for disrupting Neptune's orbit. What he found was Pluto. In the years that followed, Pluto firmly embedded itself in the public consciousness. When Pluto lost its status as a planet, there was a public outcry. Somehow, reclassifying a lump of rock 7.5 billion kilometers away was something everyone had an opinion on, even though we still knew very little about it. For decades, Pluto was no more than a dot of light in a telescope, until scientists decided it was time for a closer look. Back in 1989, Alan Stern and I organized a conference uh, to get interest going on Pluto and uh, a bunch of keen people turned up and got it started and we've been working on getting a mission and getting the mission there and we're nearly there. Now New Horizons is about to take the first ever close-up pictures of this strange distant world. It's like never having gone in your backyard and when you go out there what are you going to find? You can think of Pluto has the icy leftover remnants of the debris from the formation of the solar system those billions of years ago, kept in cold storage, just waiting for us to unlock the mysteries. It's like archaeology in the outer solar system. Pluto is not alone. Fifty years after its discovery, astronomers found a moon orbiting Pluto, almost half Pluto's width. It was named Charon. More moons would follow. Nix, Hydra, Kerberos, and Styx, the last only spotted three years ago. But it's not just moons keeping Pluto company. Astronomers have found other large bodies out there at the edges of the solar system. Lots of them. You get a sense, wow, there's objects out there, the Kuiper Belt, oh, Pluto, got moons, got more moons. It's got neighbors. One, called Eris, is as large as Pluto itself. And it was Eris that spelled the end of Pluto's planet status. Rather than classify all these new objects as planets, scientists downgraded Pluto to a dwarf planet, along with several other distant rocks. Dwarf people are people, are they not? Dwarf planets are planets. But whatever its size or status, Pluto still fascinates us. I used to do cave exploration when I was a student. And you go in and you see this passage and it goes around the corner. And you want to know what's around the corner. Right? It's the same thing with planets. That's the nature of human curiosity and uh, we're going to find out. <laughs>